Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Shout out. Hey tea sippers, hope you guys are doing good. So this weekend I had wanted to do the video on Jeannie Mai and Jeezy. But while I was in Atlanta, I just did not have the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it tonight. So there's a lot going on with their divorce and it's steadily getting messier and messier. So if you guys remember, um, Jeezy had filed a motion a few weeks ago saying that Jeannie was keeping their daughter Monaco from him and he was seeking full custody. He felt like he needed full custody of the daughter and that it wasn't fair that Jeannie was not, you know, dropping her off and bringing him over and bringing the baby over there. So a lot of people had things to say about that. Um, and then all of a sudden, this past Friday, we got hit with a bombshell. And basically, Jeannie Mai is accusing Jeezy of abuse. Now, when the information first came out, it was very vague. Um, they were saying that basically she filed court papers. She's accusing him of abuse. And then Jeezy came out to deny the claims. So at that point, that was really all the information that we had. So I kind of felt like, you know what, I know Jeezy's a philandering asshole because when Jeannie met him, he was in a relationship with his Ethiopian baby mama and he cheated on her for Jeannie Mai. So we know he's a cheater, but I'm like, I've never heard about him being abusive. Like, you know, he was with Keisha Cole. He's been with a lot of women. You know, he may be a cheater, but I've never heard about him beating folks. So then I kind of felt like, okay, well, we'll see what else comes out. You know, is Jeannie just trying to be messy? She's trying to pour more sauce on the chicken. Is she mad? Because, you know, at this point in time, she feels like she's owed half his money. So after a while, more information came out, I believe that Saturday, with details of the abuse. So we're going to go ahead and go over those details now. Okay, so this is what's being reported. They're saying Jeannie Mai is accusing her estranged husband, Jeezy, of domestic abuse and child neglect amid the couple's ongoing divorce. In a new court filing obtained by People, the real alumni 45 alleges that several incidences of domestic abuse and child neglect during her relationship with rapper born J. Wayne Jenkins. She claims Jeezy has explosive outbursts, excessive drinking, and domestic violence. So according to the complaint, Jeannie alleges that on January 18, 2022 in Miami, Florida, her then husband began to berate her in the car after he asked the driver to step out the vehicle. He hurled insults such as, you whore, I can't wait to divorce you when we get back. The court documents state that Jeannie Mai also claims that she was held against her will and Jeezy struck her with a closed fist across her cheekbone and eye, causing hemorrhaging. The pair then sought therapy in regards to the alleged domestic violence incident. Three months later, Jeannie alleges in court filings that another incident occurred at the Ritz-Carlton in San Francisco, during which the television personality claimed that she was choked from behind as she was ascending the stairs and pushed down the stairs by Jeezy. The performer then allegedly proceeded to verbally assault Jeannie and call her a fucking bitch and repeated, I can do so much better than you. Hotel security later intervened and provided protection to Jeannie after she claimed to feel unsafe. In December of that year, Jeannie alleges that Jeezy became enraged during the UNCF 39 um, Atlanta mayor's mask ball when he didn't know her whereabouts for 25 minutes. After he went to the restroom with the girl, after she went to the restroom with the girlfriend. After the incident, Jeannie claims Jeezy demanded the pair leave the party. After asking the driver to leave the vehicle, Jeezy allegedly began verbally abusing her. Jeannie says she attempted to exit the car twice. However, she claims Jeezy then grabbed her by the neckline of her dress, resulting in the dress being torn and multiple two to three inch scratches across her right breast due to Jeezy's fingernails. She claimed to have reported the incident to a therapist with Jeezy present and also told her best friend in confidence. Jeannie alleges that a fourth incident involved Jeezy crashing a golf cart which resulted in injuries to himself and Jeannie. 
She claimed that Jeezy was overly intoxicated when the crash occurred and claims he also crashed another vehicle during their marriage after drinking too much. The court documents note that Jeannie mistakenly believed Jeezy when he convinced her prior to their marriage that he was a changed man and his past was his past. But as one can see from these examples of abuse the mother endured during the marriage, that has not turned out to be the case. Additionally, Jeannie claims that she's worried for their two-year-old daughter, Monica's, Monica's safety. After an alleged October 2023 incident, which Jeannie found the toddler with her then-husband's Louis Vuitton bag with his AK-47 rifle inside at the couple's home. In the complaint, Jeannie stated that she requested Jeezy's guns be secured inside the house and the rapper allegedly failed to do so. The back and forth between this strange couple comes after Jeezy filed for divorce in September 2023. The pair have battled over the validity of the prenuptial agreement and custody rights for their daughter. Most recently, Jeezy reversed course and requested joint physical and legal custody of their daughter Monaco earlier this month. So this is what Jeezy took to social media to say. He says the allegations are not only false, but deeply disturbing, especially coming from someone I loved. This malicious attempt to tarnish my character and disrupt my family is ridiculous. It is disheartening to witness the manipulation and deceit at play. And at this time, my main concern is being an active father to our daughter as I continue to fight for the court mandated joint custody. Rest assured, the truth will prevail through proper legal channels. Then he goes on to say, y'all know me, hashtag integrity. So this entire situation is extremely disturbing, but let me say this. First and foremost, sir, we don't know you. Hell, we don't know her, okay? You guys are celebrities. She's a TV personality. You're a rapper. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors. I don't know if she's just batshit crazy or if you're just some type of batshit abuser. We don't know the details. So just writing y'all know me doesn't mean anything because we really don't know you. We don't know what goes on behind the scenes. And I think the problem with both Jeannie and Jeezy, they fell in love way too fast. They didn't get to know each other and really get to know about that person. You know, they were on their hurry up and by type shit. Hurry up and buy. Hurry up and buy. Hurry up and buy. Jeezy seeing a beautiful, exotical woman, Jeannie Solomon, you know, who was definitely richer than her last husband. And that's literally all they needed. And now we find ourselves here. Now, the whole thing is very disturbing, but like, you know, with the internet, we like receipts. So it looks like the receipts are definitely out. TMZ had them and it looks very, very disturbing. So we're going to go ahead and go over what TMZ posted on their website. Jeannie has fired back at Jeezy in their bitter divorce, asking the judge to deny him custody of their kid because she claims he's been reckless and abusive, but he calls BS. The talk show host filed new legal documents on Thursday obtained by TMZ. Jeannie makes some bombshell claims against her ex who recently asked the judge to rip up the, the temporary custody agreement and grant him more substantial parenting time for their young daughter. So these are some bruises. I mean, this looks really bad. I mean, she's scratched. She's looks like she's black and blue here. I mean, this looks horrible. Um, they're saying these are golf cart injuries. Um, Jeezy claimed he's been getting unfairly denied time with their kid, but now Jeannie has a scathing response, hurling allegations of abuse and dangerous behavior with the purported photo evidence to boot. So that's the picture of the baby, Monaco. So in the evidence, um, she's shown a picture of the Ritz-Carlton in, in San Francisco. They're saying Jeannie cites one alleged incident from April 2022 where she says they were at the Ritz Carlton in San Francisco and claims Jeezy choked her from behind while she was going up some stairs and alleges that he even pushed her down those same stairs. Jeannie claims hotel staff intervened and took a report, an alleged copy of which she attaches here. There's no explicit mention of the alleged choking, but the report does include mentions of security guard mediating some arguments between them. 
The Guard also, write, also writes a lounge server have reported seeing Jeezy push Jeannie a secondhand account. So you can see here, it looks like she texts somebody this information. And she says, baby, I have a lot of dresses to wear this week. And um, she has like a crying emoji. And then he replies back and says, I'm so sorry, babe. I haven't forgiven myself for putting you in danger. I've been uneasy and sad about it. So that is when she was accusing him of basically riding really crazy in the golf cart where they ended up crashing. So those are the bruises that she sustained while on the golf cart. And, you know, she's telling them like, hey, look, I have dresses to wear. Look at my body. We know Jeannie is stylish from head to toe, honey. That's one thing about Jeannie. She may get on everybody's nerves, but she eats when it comes to fashion. So she can't be having all these bruises on her body. And he's basically saying that he feels really bad and he feels really guilty about it. So those are some receipts right there. So now in these photos, we see guns. And they're saying Jeannie also claims that Jeezy would leave guns all over the house while the young child was around, photos of which she also attaches and claims it's incredibly dangerous. For all these reasons, Jeannie's asking the judge to deny Jeezy's request to grant him more custody, essentially saying it would not be safe for their kid. So as you can see here, looks like some type of assault rifle and a handgun. That should definitely not be in plain sight. That should not be where a child can get it. So that is very scary. Accidents happen every year where children will find guns and they accidentally shoot themselves or a sibling or a parent. So these guns definitely need to be locked up and put away. So that is what's being reported. And this entire situation is extremely disturbing. You know, a lot of people are kind of mixed on this. You have a lot of people siding with Jeezy because he's their favorite rapper or they like his music. And then you have people siding with Jeannie and saying that, you know, regardless of her race, um, you know, abuse is abuse and it's not OK. And people need to stop defending Jeezy. Um, I think the entire situation is sad, but I think let me just keep it real with you. I think the reason why she's not getting an overwhelming sense of support and again, abuse is not OK. I don't care what race the woman is. Nobody should be putting hands on anybody, okay? But I think the reason why she's not getting the support that she should technically get as an abused woman, and especially bringing that she's bringing receipts, she has pictures and things like that, is because this whole situation has kind of left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. When she got together, we all remember, you know, videos of them, you know, on their bicycle built for two. You literally could not tell them shit. <laughs> All right, so y'all remember that video of them on their bicycle built for two child. I guess it's just a bicycle built for one and she was just riding on the back. But it's like, it's almost like they were trying so hard to shove this relationship down everybody's, you know, throats. And, you know, now you got her listening to Tupac in the background. He's being all super lovey dovey. And we'd never seen that from either one of them. Like, Jeannie always talked to her ex husband like he was trash. Jeezy never really had a lot of respect for his ex-girlfriends or baby mamas. So it's kind of weird to see them showing like all this weird affection and being, you know, on overly on social media. That's why I find it very hypocritical that in the divorce, he, you know, allegedly one of the things why he wants to divorce her is that she was doing too much for social media and had the daughter on social media when this is what she's been doing from day one. She's always, you know, been like that influencer type. But he forgets that when he got with her, he was just as gushy and on social media with her and riding bikes and picking flowers and doing photo shoots. So apparently he was okay with it at first. And then at some point it started bothering him. But now with that being said, I feel like the reason why a lot of people, you know, why she has left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths is once she got with Jeezy, it's like you couldn't tell her shit. And she went on this whole, you know, hobo tour, letting everybody know that she planned on being a submissive wife. And even The Real did an episode on it after she did her interview about submission. And Kevin Samuels had also um, talked about it. And a lot of people use the things that Jeannie was saying 
to basically pit that against black women. Like, see, this is why we date outside our race. This is why, you know, Jesus with an Asian woman because she's willing to submit and be there for her man. Meanwhile, you know, people would rather be with the genie than Alani Love. So, I mean, these were conversations that were being had on social media not even two years ago. So we're going to go ahead and watch this clip real quick. I and men like myself absolutely don't care what your swallow up ass has to say about anything. You, in my, opinion, in my opinion, you and women that have your attitude are enemies to women, black women in particular. You are my enemy when it comes to dealing with black women. And I'm going to expound on that more later. I don't care who you're dating right now. You're supposed to be happy. But yet you still find a way to get your big swole ass up here and still have an attitude problem about something. Seek help and shut up. That's it. I can't judge them because that works for them. The problem that That's I right. have with this whole submission talk is that... Um, People will bring it over into real life. There's no way that women, Politics. I feel women in this country can't have real equality. This, mm, this woman is about to make the point that you can have that submission stuff at home, but when I'm in the world, treat me as an equal. Cool. No protection. No door open. No nothing. You are a genderless being. That means you got to get it out of the mud just like I do. Got no problem with that. That means at work and anywhere I don't see gender. Guaranteed. You'll break and women like you will break long before men like us will. Fine. 100% fine with that. Don't cry. Don't say shit. Don't ask for nothing. Don't, don't, don't ask for any, any, any girl push-ups in the world. You need to get it out of the mud and come Stand up, square up, and compete with men. Just because you weigh like a heavyweight don't mean you can play like a heavyweight. Tell me, Jeannie. Explain. When I hear this wow. definition, like you just said, Adrian, submitting has a negative connotation. It means that you are less important. You are lower than that person that you're submitting to. It usually can be like, you know, reference as somebody who works lower than you. And that's not what I'm referring to here. Yeah, but what I really cool. learned in my life for my definition of marriage. I'm not saying what I want works for everybody. I'm saying for me. I can get out here and lead, bring on the bacon fried up in the pan. But when I get home, I have picked a man that I am comfortable submitting to him and, and letting him lead. What these other women on the panel have a problem with is they cannot, they either do not, but I don't think they can. I don't think women like Lonnie Love can get a, a man on Jeezy's level. And you guys know I'm not a big high value man as an entertainer or an athlete. But for this one, we'll make an exception. Lonnie Love can't get a man on that level. She fails the fitness. She fails the fitness component. Lonnie Love can't get a man on that level. She fails the cooperativeness component. So she has to get what she can get. And, and then go act like there's a problem with men. No, there's a problem with you, a diet, and a gym. You and some therapy. Old Fancy sitting up there. Wow. You're going to say that, Jenny? Yeah, do you not see that ring is as big as her middle finger? And y'all are sitting up there as two unmarried, unengaged women not learning a damn thing. You aren't strong, you're stubborn. Smart women are willing to openly declare their inability and unwillingness to lead. You can do it, but do you want to? And Garcelle is by herself and Lonnie has got bottom shelf bread. Cool. The only problem is Lonnie decides to keep injecting herself into things with brothers. And the thing is, we don't want you. I'm going to just say it. Competitive, productive, successful, high-value brothers don't want Lonnie Loves. Never have, never will. Yikes. Okay, so Kevin Samuels definitely went in 
And like I said, um, people use Jeannie Mai's whole submissive talk to really like come at black women and, you know, go at black women and say, you know, this is why we choose a genie over black women. And again, there's nothing wrong with being submissive in your relationship, but you want to be submissive to the right man, right? And I think she went into this thinking, you know, all I have to do is be submissive to him and get whatever I want. And, you know, he's a so-called high value man and she found out otherwise you know even being submissive to him and you know uh doing whatever his whim whatever he wanted it didn't help her at the end of the day he still abused her so i think you also have to be smart as women you know again there's nothing wrong with being submissive to the right man but you don't want to be submissive to the point where somebody is abusing you and beating your ass and leaving bruises like that on you and you're just still going to submit and put up with it. Because let's not forget, he ran to file divorce on her. She didn't run to go divorce him. So that's very telling. Either he's very narcissistic, he was trying to get ahead of the story, right? Or she was willing to put up with it because the lifestyle. And unfortunately, a lot of women get caught up in that where, you know, they love the lifestyle so much. They're willing to take hits and abuses. And, you know, look at uh, Kim. Uh, look at Puffy's baby mama. Kim. Remember, he broke her nose. And she stayed for years. He abused the hell out of Cassie, pimped her out, had her doped up. And she stayed for years. A lot of the reason why they stayed was because of the lifestyle. They'd rather cry in a mansion than cry in the projects. And unfortunately, a lot of women had that mentality. And I think Jeannie had that mentality as well. Like, I'm going to put up with it. It is what it is. I'll keep my family together. And she didn't want to see it as a failure, right? Because she went through all this. She was, you know, sharing everything on social media. She had this grand wedding, you know, divorced her ex-husband, never had a baby with him. She became a mother because of Jeezy. So she really wanted this relationship to work. And unfortunately, she was willing to possibly put up with bruises and black eyes and everything else just to keep her relationship together. Now, another reason why fans are not too quick to believe Jeannie is Jeannie's track record. So if you guys remember, she was married to a white man previously named Freddie. And after she went through a divorce with him, um, people felt like she was definitely trying to play the victim. She was constantly throwing him under the bus. She was using her fans to basically attack Freddie on social media and his new wife, especially once it was announced that he had a baby on the way. Even though for years she said she didn't want any kids with him, somehow she got upset when he got with somebody else and had a kid once they were divorced. But um, the wife had to eventually come onto social media and check a lot of Jeannie Mai's fans and say, look, she's manipulating y'all. She basically lied on my husband to make herself look like a victim. They weren't together. They weren't sleeping together. Jeannie was talking to other guys. So it got really, really messy. So I want y'all to go ahead and watch this clip from Culture Spill. Child, the Jeannie Mai and Jeezy divorce has reportedly gotten Jeannie's ex, Freddie Hartis, out of whatever hole he was in. And reportedly, he's siding with Jeezy. He's like, bro, I totally get you. This woman is a liar who set me up too and manipulated people into believing I'm the villain. I have a really hot temper. Not a lot of people know this, but it's just something in my family. I've seen it in my grandmother. I'm sorry, I seen, saw it in my grandfather to my grandmother to my mom, to my aunts, to me, right? Mm -hmm. Damn, y'all remember Jeannie's ex Freddie, right? The thing is that when Jeannie was with Freddie, she said that she did not want children. So when she announced that she was pregnant with Jeezy's child, for some reason, people started trolling Freddie. Well, Freddie also clapped back by responding, I upgraded from trash to treasure a long time ago. Best decision I ever made. Congratulations, being truly happy is an awesome feeling. Love my little family. In other words, he basically called Jeannie trash. And when I tell you that Freddie and his wife were willing to clarify what Freddie meant by calling Jeannie trash, girl, these two exposed the hell out of Jeannie for apparently manipulating her followers into thinking Freddie was the devil. Yet behind the scenes, she was the real devil, allegedly. This is what happened. After Jeannie and Freddie broke up, Jeannie was out here talking about how the person she married turned out to be somebody else. Knowing what I know now about who I married, I wouldn't have married him. Oh. Jeannie. Yeah, no, I know. It's, I don't mean to get that serious, but I'm just saying this out there because um, it's just crazy. You hear all the time that 
Mon money can change people. Well, divorce can really change people. And it's just so weird because you, the one thing that uh, he would always say back then is like, you really truly don't know a person until they don't get what they want. But I never thought he would be the one to prove that to me, you know? I'm sorry. But while Jeannie was painting Freddie as the bad guy, Freddie's wife, Lindsay, who was also getting a ton of heat for being a homewrecker, got on the show to tell her side of the story, saying, Freddie's employee overheard Jeannie talking to one of her co-host's husbands about some very explicit, detailed things regarding another man. Freddie stayed through a lot. She isn't being honest. She was done long before I came into the picture. They no longer spoke or lived together. In his head, it was over. He has done everything to make it work, and everything legally was set in place to move on. Both Freddie and Lindsay were basically basically saying that Jeannie was just pretending to be heartbroken, crying all over about the divorce, yet in reality, she had moved on ages before the actual divorce. But when Freddie moved on just months after their divorce, Jeannie created this sob story to turn everyone against Freddie and his new wife. Then Lindsay specifically said that everything Jeannie does is for strategic attention, and her followers are just like sheep, and she has them wrapped around her fingers. Now Jeannie's fans had her back, and I don't know if it's the hole that Lindsay was talking about, but they stood by their girl and dragged both Lindsay and Freddie through the mud. I mean, why else would they be on Freddie's timeline after Jeannie announced her pregnancy, even though by that time they had both moved on? Well, maybe just like Lindsay and Freddie said, Jeannie is very manipulative. So I just find the whole situation just really sad. You know, if all of this is true and I believe it to be true, being, you know, per the receipts that she provided, you know, I feel bad for her, but I hope that people take this as a lesson. This is why I say I don't envy anybody's relationship. Everything that glitters is not gold. You don't know what happens behind closed doors. All that, you know, couple, I mean, everybody kept screaming, couple goals, you know, sh she's beautiful. She can dress well. He looks good. She really brings out the gentleman in him. Again, all of that is a social media facade. You don't know what goes on behind closed doors. While everybody was climbing Lonnie Love and saying she's big and she's the size of a linebacker and all that nonsense and she has bottom shelf Brad, she's kept her relationship private and her and bottom shelf Brad are still going strong. How about that? The one that everybody said that they would choose over Lonnie, Lonnie seems to be in a happy, healthy relationship and Jeannie's not. Because, again, she was so loud and, and um, representing this relationship and this new submission. And now it's just like, wow, it's, it's crazy to see that she was going through all of that. You know, and I feel bad for her that she had to go through that. It's horrible when any woman gets abused, you know. But, again, be careful what you ask for. And really, you know, granted, you can never truly know somebody, but, you know, you can't just fall in love with the outside and the money and the wealth and the, you know, the prestige. You know, you really have to get to know that man's character and, you know, his integrity, his values and things like that. So hopefully they'll be able to figure this out. But yeah, I do think the whole situation is very disturbing. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I look forward to hearing from you guys. I want to know what you guys think of this. Do you guys feel like, you know, uh, Jeannie was abused and, you know, or do you feel like she's over exaggerating? Cause some people are saying that. Do you feel like Jeezy did nothing to her and Jeannie's just trying to set him up so she can get his money? Cause folks are saying that as well. How do y'all feel about this situation? And then how do you guys feel about, you know, this, this relationship in general and how it was kind of like forced down folks' throats and, you know, constantly hailed as couple goals. And, you know, people have been shocked since the announcement of their divorce in September. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I want to know what you guys think about this situation overall. So thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so tell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.